Dude, remember when the Frog Brothers fought for truth, justice, and the American way? Yeah, dude. Corey Feldman in his prime hunting vampires, dude, in Santa Clara. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that, I swear. Yeah, dude. So awesome. And Corey Feldman, man, is just one of those actors, too, man, that just carried movies. And now, with everything going on with him and stuff, man, but him and Corey Haim had, like, a great run. And this is, I mean, by far the greatest film of them two, you know, together and showing off kind of their friendship. And it's just such a, just a great story, dude, between what the 80s was doing horror but like kids being at the center of that story yeah yeah i love how the kids are kind of at the forefront of this film and, and that's what makes it so relatable for me you know my first ever Corey feldman film was actually step monster which i know you and i have talked about at yeah. great lengths yeah. but when i realized that he was in the lost boys that's actually what made me want to go watch this movie when i was younger because i was just like man i loved him in step monster He's hilarious. I love his his you know his characters. Like, let's see what he does in this, and it's probably my favorite role of his. Yeah, he he crushes it in it, dude. And the, the thing that's so cool about Corey Feldman too is how he's got that like somewhat raspy voice to him. There's so many <laughs> spots in this movie, dude. Where, you know what I mean? Where he's just like, he's like, yeah, here the drive a stake through his eye. You know, like he's got like, that like yeah. Eastern <laughs> voice going on. It's like this is going on in this little kid, but he's kind of got like that grumble to him, or feels kind of like he's got that manly man attitude. Um, which is something that's so cool about the Frog Brothers in this movie is because they play the vampires so straightforward, like a normal horrific vampire. And the Frog Brothers are kind of just all on the up and up with what's going on, um, right in their comic book shop and everything. So like they're kind of playing this like how kids would. Oh, it's this fun adventurous thing, and then they get like way too deep into this, you know? Totally, totally. I love how like they basically you know use the comic book shop as a front for their vampire killing business, yeah, you know? Right. And it's just so funny because like. They they basically are just there and they seem like a bunch of burnouts and everyone thinks they're a bunch of burnouts and then in reality they kill vampires and like I think about that with like I don't know if that happened nowadays you know like the dude you know the burnout down the street he's just like you think he's just minding his own business but he's out like stalking vampires at night you know it's just the funniest thing to think about from like a realistic perspective. Yeah, dude, it's like the perfect point for that summer of the 84 movie, made, man. It's like, you have no idea what the hell's going on with your neighbor, dude. Like, they can put on any kind of <laughs> yeah. face when you go get your mail every day, but what's really going on behind closed doors, you know? Um, yeah. Cool. I love when they first, when Corey and first comes into the comic book shop, too, and you kind of get introduced to the Frog Brothers and all that. And you can tell they're kind of like, oh, look at this city boy coming in here looking all slick and with his groovy looking clothes and stuff. Yeah, dude, he's a fashion you know? victim, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> straight up and then they kind of get into that little bit of a battle where it's just like i'm looking for a batman number 14 or whatever it was and yeah, yeah. it's just like that quarterback and you can't mix these superman comics here because this hasn't <laughs> happened yet <laughs> so yeah, we're not discovered by kryptonite yet you know yeah, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, love it, I love i love how the frog brothers kind of to me represent like this underground you know like punk rock attitude you know what i mean like right. they're against the mainstream they're against the grain and what's even cooler is the whole time when you get introduced to these guys, you just kind of, they're kind of like a comedy relief at first, you know, like right. they're the surfer guys, right? Like this is the guy you think would be surfing the waves and like kind of just, you know, getting high and just being silly. Right. But then when they actually like, they first go to the vampire lair and all oh the vampires gosh, are dude. hanging upside down. Like, you don't realize that these motherfuckers mean business, dude. And then yeah. he's just like, good night, blood sucker, and just stakes <laughs> his ass. It's so awesome. Dude, oh, my it's, God. It's such a perfect scene because that's where, like, dude, I love when movies do that. So, like, the Monster Squad does it perfectly. We just watched, you know, <laughs> an arts documentary. But, like, there's so much good stuff when you have, when you're playing it straight with the vampires and these quirky kind of characters. And when those two things finally mesh together, it creates like movie magic, dude. So when that scene happens, you're like, is he really going to stake this guy? And it turns into like a full blown horror movie, dude. Cause like David wakes up, he's like, you're dead, man. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just going down, dude. Oh, I love it, man. I love it, dude. To me, 100%, The Lost Boys is. I believe. I still believe. <laughs> the greatest vampire movie of all time. 